Good morning, good morning. It's Jacqueline Richardson. It's JJ Diamond, Jackie, Deja, whatever y'all call me. We want to thank God that we've made it to another day and we're alive and well. Uh, let's check out the, the weather here in Charlotte today. Alexa, what's the weather today here in Charlotte? Right now in Charlotte, it's 35 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies and sun. Today's forecast has partly sunny weather with a high of 54 degrees and a low of 32 degrees. We're going to talk about um, financial freedom today. Mm-hmm. And everybody's um, theory of financial freedom is different. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you why. Because you have some people out here that live off of credit. Okay. And they believe to them that that's financial freedom. Uh if they can buy a house of a mortgage, um, if they can, um, they have lots of credit cards, they can buy a brand new car off the showroom floor, um, off of credit, and they think that that's financial freedom. However, to me, you know, everybody's theory is different. To me, Miss JJ, it's not, and I'm going to tell you why, um... Because I've experienced, you know, some some bad things in my upcoming of making real money. Okay. Now, I'm gonna tell you a story of what happened to me um, with a bad investment. Okay. Right before my mother died, um, she well, I I think I told y'all before I used to help my mother with her bills Um, because she was unfortunate to be able to do that. Then she turned around and got sick, so it made it worse. Um, She didn't have that much money coming in. She was living off a disability, so I had to um, pretty much cover her. You know, that's my mother. So with that being said, you know, I told myself that, you know, hey, you have to do something because you can't keep taking care of all these people and me and my family, and there's just not enough money coming in. I wanted financial freedom, okay? And financial freedom wasn't there. So I had to find another way to uh, get some money, you know? Um, matter of fact, I was listening to the song with Jay-Z this morning, on to the next one, you know, and... Sometimes, you know, we will pick and choose things fast because of our life and what's going on. Um, And of course, nobody, you know, having a job is definitely not financial freedom because you can lose your job at any given moment. They could come up with uh, the businesses going bankrupt. Uh, (laughs) um, You could get sick, you know, um, anything can happen and you lose your money. So a job, having a job is not financial freedom as well. Okay. To me, now everybody has their own theory. I'm just giving y'all my theory. Okay. And why I think the way I think. Okay. So now, you know, I said, okay, I have enough money to pay my bills because I go to work every single day. Okay. And now I have enough money to pay my mother's bills because I go to work every single day. However, it's just not enough money left for me. Okay, so now I need to go and figure out what's the next move. Okay, and my next move was to buy a vendor route. Okay, and my mother was sick, as I told y'all, you know, and I wanted to put her in a um, cancer institute, which she thought was a nursing home. Her her mind was always going, you know, (laughs) just moving too fast. And I was trying to explain to her, you know, I would prefer her to be there. And I pay for it, then her to be at home taking all these medications and she can't function, you know. She had a theory, oh, I can get me a nurse's aide, I can get me a CNA, whatever. No, that's not good enough because the CNA has to go home. I need you to be monitored 24 hours a day, okay? And I will be there every single day to, to visit you. Now, granted, I worked in Baltimore. However, um, Philly to Baltimore is about 
an hour and a half. So I would have done that for my mom, you know, take that hour and a half ride every day and or maybe every other day, you know, because it wouldn't have been for a long time. They only give them, I think, 30 to 45 days of getting uh, chemo. You know, I think it is, I can't remember what, what the doctor was saying, but I believe, I think it was like 30 or 45 days. So it wouldn't have been forever. You know what I mean? I would have just had to do what I had to do. However, in order for me to pay for that institute, I needed extra money because her insurance didn't cover it. Okay. So I decided to go out and buy a vendor route. Okay. To pay for my mother's uh, well-being and health. Meanwhile of this, okay. And it was for my significant other to run so I can stay on my job and mm. pretty much get back to having what I thought was financial freedom. Okay? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> so I'll tell y'all, a job is never financial freedom. Never. Okay? Unless you are the owner. Okay? <laughs> so now, I go... Um, by this route, you know, then I hear from my boss, you know, um, you know, it's a conflict of interest for you to have a vendor's route and a, um, Snyder's route, I mean, and, and work for us. So now mind you, now I signed baked papers. My mother's about to uh, lose her life. You know, I don't know my mother was, my mother wasn't about to lose her life at the time. No, let me, let me go back. Um, everything I went through with the vendors route, okay? Meanwhile, at that time, my mother passed away, okay? And it was too late by that point. You know, I had 30 days to sign off on that paperwork, you know, um, and I, I was, I wasn't thinking about it. I'm going to just be honest with you. Um, I could have stopped it, uh, because I did have 30 days to decide that I didn't want the route, but the thing was... I signed off on the paperwork on January 25th. My mother died on February 12th, which was two weeks later. Okay. I buried my mother on February 16th. I was mourning mentally, physically. Who can remember the date, January 25th, to say, hey. I mean, February 25th to say, hey, I don't want this anymore because my mother passed away. So... My job, they pretty much did me wrong. You know, I, I kept the route. I said, okay, well, you know, I can just stack me some money, let my significant other run this route. I'll continue to do my job, you know, and do what I do. And we're going to build money for the next traumatic life situation. Uh, so I won't have to work towards getting the money. I could just write the check. You understand what I'm saying? And I was able to write the check, but I knew I couldn't a- afford to write the check, you know what I mean? Some some bill would have been uh, neglected, and the bill that would have been neglected would have been my mother's home. So I had asked my mother to come on and move with me, which would have freed up $900 a month, because my mother was paying for a one-bedroom in New York, shabby building, $900 a month. And I said, well, if I could free up that bill, I can give that to the Cancer Institute. And then with the business, stack money, you know what I'm saying, from the business. Anyway, long story short, haters came around and wanted to throw salt on my life because they hated that I was getting too much money, okay? Um, And they told my superiors at work. And my superiors came to me and said, Jackie, you have to make a choice. And because we, you know, that's a conflict of interest. However, they never once... Never once looked at the fact that I just lost my mother. Two, I was paying my mother's bills. And three, I'm only one person taking care of a family of eight. Okay, they never looked at that. They never looked at that, you know. And I hated them for it. And I, and I still hate them for it, even though I love Frito Lay because they, they, um, they put me on, and when I say put me on to where I was able to make money that I've never seen before, okay, other than, you know, seeing street money, you know what I mean, legally, you know, and I felt some kind of way, you know what I mean, and and I had to write the right, because they never sat down and evaluated my life, okay, and what was going on in my life. I'm one person taking care of eight people, 
You know, um, you just don't uh, push a person out like that. So pretty much they gave me an ultimatum. You know, you either get rid of that and stay with us or you resign from us. So I chose to resign from them because (laughs) my name was on that paperwork, okay, Um, with that business, you know what I mean? Granted, my mother had just died, but it was too late, you know what I mean? I had already signed off on it and forgot about the 25th, which was a week later after I buried my mother. So my mind just wasn't there, you know? Um, and this is the thing too, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all gotta watch out for when you mm-hmm. having life situations and you making business decisions, if you having a life situation, sometimes it's best to wait. Okay. Sometimes you just need to wait so you could think clearly. And at that moment I couldn't think clearly. This is my mother. You know what I mean? I talk to my mother every single day, you know? So... I was running up and down the highway, you know, going to visit her, going to get her for the holidays, bringing her down to Maryland, you know. So, with that being said, you know, who can think about what a job is telling you? It's like, what? What are you saying? Don't you realize I just buried my mother? Don't you realize I was paying my mother's bills? Don't you realize I got six people I'm caring for? And this is what you're saying to me? So y'all know what I told them. Go to hell. Because that's where they're going. And they're going to they gonna continue to fill their battle. Believe me, throughout life. Because God knew what I was doing. I was doing what he needed me to do to make sure my mother lived. You know what I mean? And it didn't turn out that way. So somebody is going to feel the wrath of that. I may not ever see it. But there will be some things that go down. And they're going to wonder why. Because you never sat down once and asked me what was going on in my life for me to say I needed to buy another route. Okay. I remember when I was doing bread, you know, shout out to my, my superior, Shahad, you know, I was, I was doing um bread route and he knew it, you know, and the conflict of interest as well, but he also knew that I was taking care of my mother, you know? Because, you know, people talk, you know, and um, I had to send off a letter and, of course, faxed it from from work <laughs> um, that I would pay my, mother, my mother's rent. So it wasn't like I was just helping her. I was in contract of, you know, I, I had told these people that I would pay her rent. So I was in a bind. I had no other choice. You know what I mean? Even if I decided to say, no, I'm not doing it. They coming after me because I wrote a letter notarized saying that I will pay my mom's rent. You understand what I'm saying? So when you're looking at stuff like that, you know, um, and the way people look at things, you know, they, 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 they really can be very evil, you know, and I can say like with my, my, my superior, he could have. He was evil sometimes, and I and I get it. You know, dealing with so many people at the job. But when it came to me making an extra money, he did his research and he knew that I was in a bind. I needed to have that extra mm-hmm. money because I had bills to pay, not only in Maryland but in New York as well. And I'm only one human being. <laughs> okay, I'm not a robot, so you know I don't have a money tree in my backyard. So. I can't go out there and pick some dollars and send it to my mom and say, here, pay your bills. I, I couldn't do that. I have to work for it. You know, and most of my days, I was working seven days a week. Okay? Long story short, um, this is when I learned that a job is not financial freedom. Okay? Moving on to buying a home. You buy a home on mortgage. That's not financial freedom. Okay? It's only financial freedom if it's paid off in full. Okay? Because Mm -hmm. at any given time, if you get sick, lose your, for some reason, 
you know, like a lot of these people on the internet, you know, and I don't knock them. I don't knock them. I'm, I'm not even jumping on that bandwagon myself, you know, um, just like I get on here every day. I don't make the money that I, I should be making on here for doing podcasts and telling my life or um, giving um, advice, but I do it and hoping that one day I will make that money. If it may, it may be from this podcast or it could be from the podcast, somebody seeing me on the podcast um, enjoying what I say and hey, say, hey, you know what? We want you on our show or we want you here and we're going to give you this amount of money. And then I can stack. You understand? Because at any given time, if you lose anything that's not stable, meaning a job, um, your business, okay? Um, it's like a, a lot of business owners, you know, and I'm going to use um, Jeff, uh, Amazon, you sense an instance. I've been studying this man for a lot of years, okay? And I studied him even more when I started working for him. And when I say study, meaning learn his tactics, okay? And of course, I'm not going to learn every tactic, but I see his movement, okay? And what he's doing and why he does it, okay? The same with Martha Stewart, you know, um... When she started with the products and Amazon with his products and stuff. These people really wanted financial freedom. Okay. And the reason why I say this is because they might have started out with a little bit of products and they kept building and building and building. And Martha Stewart did it so much to where she forgot to pay her taxes and Went to jail behind it, but she came out and, and kept building and building and building. This woman got so many products, it's unreal. I went into a store, um, what is it, um, Michaels, Michaels, okay? It's a craft store. <laughs> Every, she's everywhere. You hear me when I say she's everywhere? She's everywhere. Sister said, I have to do this time for the government. It is what it is, but I will have financial freedom. Okay, so anyway, long story short, I walked into the uh, uh, Matthews, I mean Matthews, the uh, Michaels, and who do I see have her own section of paint, <laughs> um, all kind of crafts, and I said, I know that don't say Martha Stewart. Yes, it does. I said, this chick is everywhere. You have to give them a big up for it. Because they struggled through that thing and kept creating products and creating products. And like, you know, even with me right now, you know, I told y'all, I said, okay, I'm coming with a palette. Then I decided to, to do my bath salt that I use, you know, on a regular basis. And then I came with some more products that I'm going to be selling, you know. This is what I chose to do, Okay. And, like, some people, you may see them, there's still one product out there, you know. But you got to remember, where there's your product, there's always somebody else, okay? And somebody can come right along and take your business, okay? So, you have to have enough products to cover that, okay? And not only enough products to cover it, if your stuff is out of season... Have something to back up that out of season product. Okay. So these are the things that we have to think about when we're building, you know, and I said, okay, I, I, I missed my, my last investment wasn't good. You know what I mean? I, I just was so upset about the outcome of my last investment. And that was with Snyder Lance um, when I bought the Venice route. It actually put me in debt instead of helped me. However, um, this time I said, when I make an investment, I'm going to try to make the best investment possible. I've been in sales for over 15 years. I, I know a lot of the ropes, but I'm moving on to what, the other side. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to be a distributor versus a salesperson. Okay. So I had to learn that, that side of it. It's still sales, but I still had to learn that side of it, okay? And they, in that, in that side, 
They all work together. Okay? It's totally different. So I know y'all looking at, because see, I've been through one level of it. You know what I mean? I've been through one level of it, seen it, achieved it, you know, <laughs> uh, failed in it. I did both, okay? And now I'm moving another level, okay? I'm actually doing two levels because not only am I distributing my product, I'm going to be making my product, okay? So I'm doing two different things, and... You have to study before you do these things. You can't just throw your money into stuff, especially me failing from the last time. I had to study this time. My mind was clear. I made sure I took a whole year and meditate, thought about it, said, what you going to do? What you going to do? And this is why, you know, I've taken so long. You know, these people are like, oh, well, you said you was going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. But I'm not rushing to do it because I got to make sure my stuff is right. My eyes are dotted. My T's is crossed. Because when I go into this, I want to go into this with financial freedom. Okay? And meaning that I'm making enough money to where if I did buy a house off a mortgage, I can pay my house off in five or ten years. Versus... uh or. You never know. God may bless me to the to the to the highest, and I might get a check where I can pay the house off right away. Who knows? You know what I mean. However, that's what I call financial freedom. Not when you have a mortgage for thirty years, and you, you got to pay these bills for thirty years. Life change in thirty years. You get older. Um, you, you can't do the things you, you used to do. Things change every era. Okay, you got to remember now, you, you, you're paying for a house for three eras. In every era, things change. This is why when the COVID went down, and, I, and I'm going to break this down to y'all a little bit so y'all can get a little bit of understanding what I'm saying. When this COVID went down and we was getting ready to go on the presidency, you know, where people didn't understand where the Democrats was about to come in, you know, a lot of the Republicans, you know, when you start talking about raising taxes, you're raising taxes on not only the taxes of p people buying stuff or what's being taken out your check is being taken out off your house, your cars, uh, whatever you're paying taxes for. So the Republicans, you know, they kind of got really sticky with it because they like, yo, I got a million dollar home and they talk about raising taxes. You got to be killing me. My house is almost paid off and I'm not going to be able to afford the taxes. Okay, so this is the way they was looking at things. And I understand, you know what I'm saying? You don't understand these type of things unless you want to been there to an extent and you can see the reality of things, okay? So these people start selling their homes because they're like, oh, no, no, no. I will not get caught up in that rap where the sheriff's is coming and putting a padlock on something that I paid for and I'm going to lose everything that I put into that home. That's what people be facing. So it's not financial freedom. Okay, that's what y'all got to understand. If any time someone can come to you and say, you haven't paid your bills and I'm taking this, it's not freedom. Okay, not at all. Now, if you got money in, lots of it, and you can go and buy another home and sit on that one and wait for it to, to sell, then you got financial freedom because that means you got enough money in the bag and enough credit to move on with that property sitting. Okay? So it's a lot to this thing, people. And see, God took me through this early. He took me through it early. He didn't wait for me to get to the top and brought me back down. He took me through this early. The same way he took me through going through major triumph with my little brother and my mom and all of that stuff and being in foster care and all that stuff. He did all of that when I was young. So I went through things early. So I learned things a little bit different than others because I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm coming straight out the gate with it. Bow. A new level, new disappointment. Okay. But God took me through that so I can learn something from it early so I won't make the mistakes that others make. 
okay, and have to worry about the government or the banks coming in, taking what I worked for. You know what it's like? And, you know, I, I see a lot of homeless people, you know, and sometimes I talk to them, you know, and some of them was rich, rich, okay? And I mean rich, rich. This is one lady in New York I had met. She was rich, rich, okay? And she lost her job, lost everything. You know, she told me the story. And she was like, and this is where I remains. Here pushing a shopping cart. You know? And it's a lot of them out there like that. A lot of them. Because they have nowhere to turn mentally. They have raised their lives so high. To where when they fell, you fall real hard. Because the bigger your finances are, the harder you fall. This is why I tell people, you know, they they laugh at me when I say, I don't want to be rich. Okay? Because the more you have, and when you fall, the harder you fall. To God, I only fell a little bit. You know, because my bills was only 10 grand a month when I was living in Maryland. You know what I mean? And that's what some people make in a year. So when the reality of it, you know, and I, I thought I was falling hard, like, you know. But in reality, I'm not. Because imagine people bills that it's 100000 a month or a million dollars a month, $10 million a month. So when they fall, they fall real hard. And sometimes you have to delete. You have to get rid of things. You know, and it's just the facts. You know, if you see, that's why you got to keep up on your finances. You have to. You know, I, I budget, I try to budget very well. I'm always doing numbers, you know, like I tell people, you know. And they don't understand my my t- technology of it. <laughs> when I say technology, meaning because you have to think like a computer. You know what I mean? <laughs> um... They don't understand it because they've either had people doing their own finances and they failed. So they just don't get it. You know what I mean? They're just not smart enough to understand like this person has been through some things in order for them to sit down and and, and do those numbers and, and say, hey, can I afford this? Would I be able to do this? I'm not jumping in this, you know, um, what they, what's that saying? Jumping out of a plane without a parachute. No, because God already took me through it early. He took me through it early. So he he already has showed me that if you're not secure financially, meaning job-wise, business-wise, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. So now I have to look at things differently. So now that I'm moving up to the next level of sales, I had to study first because I want to make sure that I'm working towards financial freedom within the next 5, 10, 15 years. And when I say financial freedom, everything is paid off. Not that I have excellent credit and I'm living a temporary life because that's what it is. It's temporary until... It's paid off. Because at any given moment, you can fall. Because I know it happens to me. And God took me through it early. And the reason why I don't want to be rich, and and I'm going to say it again, is because the bigger you are, the more money you have, the harder you fall. And then it's harder to come back up when you're too rich. You know, some people, you know, what was that saying? Some people are worth more when they're dead. And it's true because they be in so much debt. Look at Michael Jackson, for instance. He was in so much debt before he died. He was leasing a home before he died. And was getting ready to get back out there because he had been through so much illnesses, you know, um, being sick and, and, you know, just going through it. 
And, and people think, oh, because you are a star and you got millions and millions of dollars, but you're paying millions and millions of people as well to keep their life above water. So how can I be so rich? And then he was out there helping people that didn't have. So you got to look at the facts of things, people. This is why we tell y'all to meditate and open y'all third eye. Because y'all don't see the facts of things. Y'all not. And it's not that y'all are stupid. Y'all minds are just so cloudy about what's going on today. You can't see what's going on tomorrow or what's going to happen tomorrow. And this is why we say meditate, clear your mind, keep your mind clear at all times so you can see, especially when you're making decisions. Ugh. So this is just the facts of it, you know. Um, he was preparing himself to do a, a major, major tour that would have took him out of that debt. Okay? But unfortunately, he died before it happened. You know what I mean? And it, it's, it's a sad old deal because, you know, I'm, I'm a Michael Jackson fan, big Michael Jackson fan, Janet Jackson fan. You know, um, I've been fans of them for many, many years. Started out with my mom, you know, dancing in the living room. Y'all know, I got to just tell y'all, my mom, she was a dancer. She was into ballet, though. And then she would, you know, do her regular, you know, dances or whatever the case may be. And she always had me dancing. And Michael Jackson was, like, always on the top of the list when she started playing music. You know, we had to hear Michael. So I was a big fan of Michael's, you know. Um, so I watched them, you know, and watched the things that was going down. You know, they, they cut his money short with the nonsense. You know, um, how can I say it? You know, this man went from owning a amusement park to leasing a house. So that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. The bigger you are, the harder you fall when that money ain't right. And at any given moment, anything can happen. Okay? And sometimes you just have to pull out. You have to pull out. Or have enough money to build another investment. Okay? Look at Amazon. This man is into so much, it's unreal. He even got down with the EPT crew. He said, I'm, I'm going in, y'all. I'm going in. <laughs> he said, I'm going in. And I don't knock him because the money is there. If y'all fools over here ain't going to buy nothing. I bet you my food stamp crew will. Somebody gonna buy something. Okay? He ain't no fool. He said, because I will not fall. I will continue to have financial freedom. Not only for me, but for my employees. So I can continue to pay them. You know how many jobs? You know, I was looking at, um, I call her my niece, you know, one of the kids that, you know, I, I, I put my heart on and my love on as I was growing. Um, she's out in Jacksonville, and I remember a couple of years ago, um, she was writing all over the Facebook like they haven't paid us. My job hasn't paid us. They, 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 they don't have the money to pay us. Who wants to work a job where they can't cut that check? And telling you, oh, we'll, 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 we'll get to it. It's just, are we going through some issues? No, 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 no. I undid the work already. I want my money. My kids don't want to hear that y'all having financial problems because I got up every day and they suffered and I came to work to work for you people and I can't get a check. It don't work that way. <clears throat> okay? And big companies be on this stuff too. They haven't prepared themselves for the fall. So, you know, this is why I study y'all. You know, I'm... I'm I, I look at these big, big hitters. You know, I ain't looking at none of these small hitters. Don't get me wrong. They inspire me too because they're they doing it. And I can always learn something from them, you know, that I might have missed. That's why I always listen to other inspiring people. And I'm not saying don't listen to them. You always listen because it could be something that you missed. That they have that you just didn't touch, touch base with yet. However, these big, big hitters that's holding on. Like places like like look matter of fact look at Macy's, they get rid of close so many stores it's unreal. 
Macy's. That's unheard of. They've been out here for so many years. You would never hear Macy's are closing store. Macy's? That don't even sound right. But they said before we lose, we will shut down some of these stores. They ain't taking that loss. We're going to downgrade. Because we ain't going to lose. We've been here too long. Okay? And sometimes, that's what you got to do. You got to downgrade. Or you merge with another company to uplift you. You know, just like Metro and T-Mobile. Same companies, different services, you know. But they merge together to get bigger. Sometimes that's what you got to do. You marry a company and y'all rise together. That's what you got to do in order to stay above water and continue to have that financial freedom. And a lot of companies do it, you know? Even in sales, let me tell y'all. I noticed this a long time ago, you know, um, when I first got into working for Frito, you know, and Pepsi, for people that don't know, Frito-Lay is owned by Pepsi, PepsiCo, okay? Y'all know Pepsi Bottling Company, you know, you may see some of those, but they don't they don't be um actually PepsiCo's. They're like um off brand distributors. Okay, but they still get their product from Pepsi. Okay. So it's a lot to this game, y'all. Y'all don't y'all don't know how this thing works. It's a lot. You gotta study, you know, especially when you're in sales. You gotta know what's going on out here. But these big hitters don't fail because they work together for financial freedom. The birds fly together. Okay, that's the way it works. Now, for those that don't know, PepsiCo holds down Tropicana, Quaker, Taco Bell, Kentucky Fried Chicken, <laughs> um, Frito Lay, Pepsi, and a couple of other brands that I just can't remember at the moment. Okay? And I bet y'all didn't know that. Okay? Because the birds fly together. They break the chains together and they rise. And that's how they become 500 fortune companies or fortune 500 companies. Okay. I don't want to tell Amazon business because he, he in a lot. Even though I know it. I ain't going to tell him nothing because, you know, he's still on the rise. When no, when he he get off that rise, then maybe I'll tell it then. <laughs> but for right now, he on the rise, and I'm still watching. I'm still watching. See, he don't know he got a lot of us watching him. We watching every day because we don't. We we the next generation coming up to build these big fortune companies. So we gotta watch the progress. There's somebody right now sitting down watching his numbers right now. How much money he made yesterday? Believe it when I tell you. In the stock market, they're watching. Okay. The sales went down 1%. Okay. Oh, okay. And tomorrow, say tomorrow. Yeah, one of them. Oh, 20%. Okay. So let me see. I wonder what he's selling. Let's see what the people talking about on TikTok. Oh, okay, this is what he's been selling. This is why his sales is going on. Okay, gotcha. There's somebody doing that. I'm telling you, major, major, major education to follow that they may have, they could be billionaires. And they sit, not, I mean, not billionaires, millionaires. And they sitting on a couple of million and they thinking about doing something like he, what he's done. And they watching. And like, I'm going to wait. I'm going to see. I'm going to see. I'm going to wait. I'm going to study this for a moment. This is what we do. This is what we do. We study. You just don't jump out of a plane or a, 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 yeah, a plane without a parachute. Okay, we study. We take our time. You don't rush into this thing. You know? Now, I told y'all my products will be coming by the end of the month. Most likely it will. However, if I have to push it back, I will. Because making sure things are right for your customer 
is the number one key in sales. Number one key. And I've been on both sides. So I, this is my, my first time going into this other side. You know. Uh, well, no, not really. Because I used to sell things back in the day, but it wasn't legally. So I took care of my customers back then, and that's why I got so much love. But I want to make sure my customers are good. I want to keep my customers happy. You can't please all of them. But you try your best, you know. So I want to make sure my products are right for my my people, you know. So I can gain financial freedom later on. And continue to build and build and build and build. So I see things differently than what some of the other people that y'all come in contact with may see. Okay, because I've already been down a certain level. And I've seen, I've, I've been through so many businesses, y'all, it's, it's unreal. Okay? Some businesses I just got tired of, I just didn't want to do it no more. Some businesses that, it just the investment wasn't there. You know, it's, it's a bad thing when you put your money into something and the investment is just not there. And you're trying to hold on and you're like, okay, it's going to get better. But sometimes you just got to let go. You know? So, yeah, it, it's a lot to this thing, people. You know, it's it's a lot to it. You know, I was looking at a, a post yesterday where this guy said, um, he said last night, he said, now, why is people still paying for college when everything that they're learning in college, we can get off of Google? And I was laughing, like, because he's right. Everything that the schools teach, we can ask Alexa, we can ask Siri, we can Google, we can go on Yahoo, you know, we could go on Microsoft and they're going to give us what we need. But in today's world, you got to have that paperwork. So even if you learned it on, on, on Google or wherever, they want that paperwork. Mm. Saying that you physically went and got the education. But it's actually a waste of time. So just think if they took, because you know the government got to get to the bottom of everything. If they feel like they're losing money in something or in an organization... They're going to get rid of it, no matter how long it takes. And if it means that the internet is a part of that their destruction, oh, they will get rid of it. So this is for the people that works based on the internet. Start looking at that. Okay? Even some of these YouTubers are moving over to the music side of things, the sales side of things, because they see their money going down because things are not right. Okay? So don't live your life off the internet. Just because you're successful right now don't mean you're going to be successful five years from now. Think, people. Just think. That's all I say. You have to think. The internet is the worst destruction the world could have had. And they see that. They was even trying to get rid of FM to turn it over to the internet. You got to be kidding me. That's why I was going off on social media. No way possible you getting rid of FM. When we had FM and AM radio before this internet, we had them satellites up and they was able to inform us whenever we needed information. Without the internet, if they shut down the lights right now, okay, most likely we could still hear the FM radio, okay? So, because I've been in a blackout in New York, and we still listen to music and dance in the dark. So I know it can be done, but you won't be able to use the internet because the internet needs power. Electrical power and, and, and on waves. They do use the waves too for the internet, but it's going to slow down dramatically. And who's going to get anything done? So y'all pay attention. This is Jacqueline Richardson, Miss JJ Diamond, Jackie Deja, whatever y'all call me. I love y'all, and I hopefully will talk to y'all tomorrow. Y'all all have a good day. Stay blessed.